morning we were looking for individuals to provide altar flowers for the month of September and as you know the sign up sheet is in the back. Are there other announcements?
Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, and on those who wait upon his love, to pluck their lives from death, and to feed them in the of death. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our hearts rejoice in him. For his holy name, we Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us.
one another with signs of love and peace. Don't be stingy. Pass the love around. <laughs>
as I hope you are when you're sitting here in church with us. And this goes for everyone, not just you. And I'm going to tell a couple of stories that relate to peace. Okay? Story number one. This story comes from an, a different tradition. The story comes from Asia, um, uh, I believe Japan or China, where um, great wise men lived out in the wilderness and received students who came up to them and asked them profound questions. So one day, a student came up to some enlightened master and asked, Master, what are you doing today? The master said, nothing. But master, said the student, you were doing that yesterday. <laughs> Master replied, I'm not finished. <laughs> now, you know how nice it is to finish <clears throat> something? I imagine just occasionally your mom and dad get after you to finish what you're doing, which includes cleaning up. These are all very good things to do. And there is a difference between, there are two words we can use for that. We can use the word finished or complete. Okay, complete the task, finish the task, fairly, fairly similar. But here's, here's another story about the difference between being complete and being finished. When you marry the right person, your life is complete. If you marry the wrong person, your life is finished. <laughs> the right person catches you with the wrong person, you are completely finished. <laughs> well, you've got to plan ahead, you see. <laughs> so planning is very important. So now I have some idea of the difference between being complete, being finished, when you complete a task, a sense of fullness and peacefulness arises, and you're very, very satisfied, rather than just being done for the day. But sometimes it's okay to say, hey, I'm finished for the day, I can't do anymore. But what we yearn for is completeness, and the completeness that comes from always being in relationship with the, the risen Lord and the living God. End of lesson. <laughs> for a moment of silent prayer and then I'll pray on behalf of all of us.
to give thanks to you for our every blessing and to be with our friends and neighbors. We give special thanks for the gifts of summer, for extra daylight, for the harvest of the fields that delight the eye and delight the taste buds. As we enjoy your creation this summer, create in us pure hearts and a hunger to know you better. Bless our children and their parents and teachers. Bless this town of Gray, this county of Cumberland, the state of Maine, and these United States. We pray for those who are sick in mind or body, those who are on the prayer wheel of our church. We pray for our sister churches in Gray, in the United Church of Christ, and especially for those congregations around the world who endure persecution for the gospel's sake. May your healing power be with those who are ill, your saving power with those who care for them. May our hearts be full of gratitude, for the gift of life, for family and friends, for being able to gather and worship in a free country, the gift of living in a beautiful place. And with your spirit moving within us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. And the book of Hebrews continues in this, along this theme of faithfulness. This is from chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by faith the men of old received divine approval. By faith we understand that the world was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was made out of things which do not appear. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven, and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received what was promised, but having seen it and greeted it from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Having solved the big problem, having completed 
a major project. There's the peace that comes after winning and the lack of peace that comes after losing. There's peace that comes after a long meditation. I can't do this, but early in the Christian era, many sat and meditated for hours, days, weeks, and even months, meditating only on Christ's victory in the presence of God. How they did this, we do not know. But we have discovered abandoned, an abandoned monastery, for example, on an island off the coast of Ireland. And these people lived in little beehive um, dwellings made out of stone. Each monk got an individual beehive dwelling, a little dome, a little dome structure made out of stones, and they spent hours and days meditating there. It must have been the loneliest place on earth, and somehow they were at peace there. Some people's uh, peacefulness draws you in and fills you up, and you just want to be around them. Such a person must have been our Lord and many saints of the church. Our readings today now focus on faith, which is one of the most important things that make for peace. If we truly have peace, we have faith that it will last. If we have faith, we are probably at peace. Our readings are among the most familiar and important in the Bible. In the first, we hear how God took Abraham outside one evening and showed him the stars of the desert sky. Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. And said, so shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed what he was told in this story, he was told to set forth on a journey to a new land, having faith, having confidence, being full of hope that God was guiding him. <coughs> Thus, he could be at peace while he journeyed into the unknown. And of course, life is always a journey into the unknown. We do not know what tomorrow will bring. Remember that the pilgrims arrived here in late November of 1620. Half of them died that winter, yet they stayed. They never doubted that God was with them and that they were on a mission from God. Their faith gave them peace with their decision. In our reading from the New Testament this morning, we hear that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the Word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. This passage reminds us that we live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God, whom we cannot see, made everything that we can see, and hear, and touch, for that matter. Abraham obeyed God, whom he could not see, but by faith could hear, and that has made all the difference. We Christians, we people of the book, have always been a future-oriented people. We have never been bound by the grudges of the past. The pilgrims who landed here 
certainly more though, mourned those who died during that first terrible winter. But then they gave thanks that they were still alive, and they lived in hope of founding a new society here in the new world. They looked forward to the city whose architect and builder is God, and we are living in. Every congregation in America today is grateful for their faith, for that faith still moves us into the future. In his famous letter to the Corinthians, Paul wrote about faith, hope, and love. These are certainly the most important things that make for peace. Take any one of them away and you probably haven't got it. But they work together to create peace. We live, there is no need to repeat, in a contentious time. When people's anger about past wrongs is drowning out faith, hope, and love <coughs> altogether. When many groups of people, especially our political parties, and probably all of us on some days, are defined less by what we love than by what we hate. It is a common temptation, one of the oldest. So while we are still resting in the warm days of summer, and I hope spending much of those days in masterly fashion, doing nothing. <laughs> Let us have the faith of Abraham that God is still leading us. Let us find common ground and celebrate what we love. Amen. Thank you.
rejoice your joys. So many beautiful places, as you said in your um, prayer about how lucky we are to live in Maine. What a beautiful spot. Last weekend we were in Pemaquid, um, a extended family gathering. Today I am all packed to go to Pilgrim Lodge for three days, but it's going to take me two days to haul everything in. <laughs> and I'm told that Isabel has about as much stuff as I do. So anyway, that's a beautiful thing. And then we return Wednesday, and then on Sunday we leave for Prince Edward Island for a, a real family vacation. Um, Corey will be home and so he and his wife and children and Holly and her husband are traveling from Pennsylvania so we'll all be at PEI for a week so we are so blessed to live in this state of Maine and to just enjoy all the beauty around even if it's in your own little backyard. <coughs> well this is kind of a backyard story too. Uh, my wife Marilyn has become a loon ranger on Little Sebago. And I'm, I'm a, uh, an assistant loon ranger. And I'm not allowed to do any specific identifying, but I drive a boat. Uh, we, have been, we have been monitoring uh, a chick that was born uh, in the upper lake, and it is now considered uh, fully fledged and, uh, because it's just over six weeks old. And uh, yesterday evening, uh, we heard our loon baby, Pete, this is his name, <laughs> call for the first time. <clears throat> we, heard this, we heard the adults make a, a distress call because the eagle flew up the bed. And then we heard this other kind of like gargled distress <laughs> call. And we got in touch with the head loon lady who said, that was probably Pete's first distress call. So that was cool. Uh, wow. Cool. Thank you. Well, I had two joys this morning. Speaking of beautiful places in Maine and family time, um, my two sisters and cousin and I, we go to Old Orchard every year for three days. We did that this week and had a fabulous time just going in the pool, sticking our feet in the ocean, playing cards, just having fun. That was really great. And the Blueberry Fest yesterday, the pie eating contest. <laughs> Beverly has some pictures, which I'm sure she'll post on Facebook. Um, the kids were so cute with blueberries all over their face. Uh, Pantry made $272 from this yesterday. And I encourage everyone to think about joining the pie eating contest next year. So it's great for the food pantry. Thank you. I have what I consider a cute story from the Blueberry Festival yesterday. I worked at the Dry Middle School booth and we offered 12 pen writing to children and many adults loved it. There was one little girl who sat there, very carefully writing, finished, stood up, and I watched with curiosity. She opened her wallet, set a quarter down on the table, and left. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I have two joys. One that Tata I remember that I played it, raised ten thousand dollars for breast cancer, and it's always a joy for me to bring you the special music. My joy began last, this past Tuesday, when I thought my life as I knew it was over, was finished. And then, come Thursday, it's a get out of bed. You're all right. You're welcome. <laughs> and I think the, the love of my family has helped me get up out of bed. And oh no. And I'm able to be here today and feel free. Yeah. And, uh, and I know I've not finished yet, so <laughs> I have the joy too that my sister and her husband are here visiting us and are here and then they're here too. Yeah. <laughs>
I guess I might as well chime into the case. <laughs> Seeing that we're up here from Florida, and um, if you know the temperatures in Florida right about now, we, uh, we, we, would, we would feel like we were finished. <laughs> Maybe I've gone to the wrong place. <laughs> but um, it's been a joy to be here and see all the y'all some that I have seen because I've been like, as I said someone earlier, sneaking up here for better than 30 years and just didn't really know it. But uh, it's been a joy to be here, enjoy this place, the family, and all y'all. So thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. 